John Kniff became a father in the year 2000. Little did John know his life would be changed for the better. His daughter was born on November 23, 2000. His daughter Katie made John's life exciting as she was the apple of his eye. He did anything to make her happy. He was also a good man, talented, and always offered a helping hand to others. He had a talent for building anything including shelves, a bread box, a bed frame, a tree house, a boat, and a step stool, just to name a few. When John became a father for the second time to my niece Katie, it was in the later years of his life. And just like with everything, John approached fatherhood in a quiet, composed manner. He was strong, he was loving, and he was nurturing. You wouldn't, if you knew John as a man, you wouldn't think of him as the nurturing person that he actually was when it came to parenting his child. He enjoyed spending time with her. He loved teaching her things. And I guess that was one of the things that I saw most in him the teacher that came out in him when he was around Katie. He wasn't preaching to her. He wasn't instructing her. But everything he did with her was just a little lesson in life. And he had a tremendous relationship that he built with her from the time she was an infant until all the way through her toddler years and her childhood. I believe John was a wonderful father because he was 56 years old when Katie was born, and she was his second life. From the moment she was born, there was nothing that he wouldn't do for his Kate. They went everywhere together, to the gas station, to the diner, to the cigar store, the bagel store, the fish store. He would call her to take her out to have breakfast with himself and all of his retired friends. They were always together. I never heard him raise his voice to her. I knew John Kniff for about 20 years. He was an incredibly wonderful person. I knew him as my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, as a son-in-law, and then as a father. I would describe him as a man with quiet strength. He had been a Marine and he had a demeanor that was that of a very, very quiet person. You knew he was in a room even when he wasn't speaking. He had presence, but was not a big talker. What he was, was incredibly empathetic. He was the person who saw someone who needed something and just quietly went about getting it for them, doing it, give them, giving them something. You never really knew he was going to do it. He just did it. And I think that that came from the empathy that he had for, for people, whether it was as a fireman or as a family member or as a friend. I thought John Kniff was a wonderful man because he was so humble and so kind. He had an infinite amount of talent. He could do stained glass, he could paint pictures, he could build anything. He even built his own boat when he was working as a commercial fisherman. Among other things that John could build were golf clubs. He loved the game of golf. He built his own clubs and he built whole sets of clubs for his friends. He was even profiled in Golf Magazine in an article about golfers. He never told anybody about it. He never bragged about anything. He was totally humble. He was so loved by the men who worked for him in the fire department that one time at a St. Patrick's Day parade after he had retired, we were standing on the side and the, one of the firemen marching in the parade saw him and shouted out his name. Every fireman marching in that parade broke ranks and came running over to hug him. A friend of ours told me one time that John was so quiet, you almost never heard him speak, but you knew he had arrived at a party as soon as he walked into the room 
because although he never talked much, you could just feel his presence. That's the kind of man he was. John was an exceptional man. He made a positive impact on everyone he met. Everyone who knew him misses him.